Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Matt. Matt is from London. So let's see what Matt has to say. Enjoy the interview. Hello. Hello, Matt. Hey, William, how are you? I'm very well, Matt. How are you doing? I'm good. We're just doing foam gymnastics. One second. <laughs> I can see I a think bit it's of okay. Yes, was a little bit like upside down. Are, are you, am I upside down on your screen? No, 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 you're not. Good. <laughs> Great. Let me just adjust the volume slightly. There we go. That's okay. So, how are you feeling today, Max? Uh, I'm I'm very good today. I'm having a very busy but fulfilling day. The uh -huh. weather outside in London is amazing it's as amazing. you may know <laughs> it's, yes, it's, it's just beautiful went, yes i went for a run this morning and it just felt like oh my god summer is coming it's on the way i can feel the vibe already come you know what i mean <laughs> it's that whole kind of spring energy that's slowly yeah. coming out yeah and even though it's still february it's like that just just that energy is just like a new life it's like rebirth like the phoenix it's amazing i, I love it I think the vibe around London is is is, uh, is the positive vibe after the announcement from Boris last night. <laughs> so I think everyone's yeah. like, everything's like, oh my God, things are getting you know in a good way now. So <laughs> yes, fingers right. crossed. Yes, yes, fingers <laughs> crossed. That's for sure. That's for sure. Matt, just before we start the game, just tell me where are you from? Uh, so I am from a small town outside of London, originally. So. Um, British, unfortunately, or fortunately, because um, we're very lucky in this country. Um, and I have been in London for 10, 11 years now. Wow. Um, and th those 10, 11 years have been transformative. It's been amazing, really amazing. I've, funny enough, I've been longer than you. I'm from Brazil originally, but I've been in London for four, almost 15 years now, like next month. Next amazing. Month. God, my God. And how is it for you? London is home for me right now, you know, uh, it's funny because I've been here for so long. I was living in Portugal before moving to the UK and um, I was in Portugal for five years. And uh, four years ago, I went to um, I went to work for Disney World in Orlando. And that was the very first Brilliant. time it was the very first time when I stayed away from London. So the contract for four months only. So two months I was there. I was like, oh, my God. I just miss London right now. I just, I just when I realized that London is home. That's the, I, I remember yeah. the exact moment. I was having yeah. a coffee in this, in this uh, Starbucks in, in Nassau, in Bahamas. I remember having a, a, like this coffee, and I was like, oh my god, I miss London now. I miss London. I could be in London right now. I just want to go back. It was two months <laughs> to go still. And I was like, oh my god, yes. Yeah. So I was working a cruise ship uh, for Disney World, and uh, yes, amazing. It, it the first time. So yeah, so yeah, London is home for me now. I'm, I'm very happy being here. I just love the whole, the whole vibe and the whole, you know, everything. It's about London. It's um, it's great, you know. So I love it. Love London. And uh, Matt, what do you do for a living? So I am a life and small business coach and hypnotherapist, mm -hmm. and that's something that I've been doing for the past two years now having retrained a couple of years ago. And um, in, your, in your opinion, what's the best part of being um, a personal coach? It's about guiding people to their own, their own truths, their own potential, allowing them to find it themselves. Um, and just, just seeing the transformation in people even in such a short time as, as one session or a couple of weeks, couple of months, it's just, it's incredible. Um, and I think it really can help people live their true like inner being and really realize it and really go for it, you know? So it's, it's a really exciting place to be. Um, and I enjoy it as well. And when, when you do hypnotherapy, it's very intense for the client and me. There's, there's a lot of work for a hypnotherapist to do, to guide someone through that process. But the, the change at the end, the things they can take away is just incredible. So it's fascinating. 
I'll, I'll tell you something now. I've I've done already like I've interviews with people since I started this project last year. I've done already over like 300 people worldwide, and uh, wow. you are my first guests as a hypnotherapist. And when I saw your profile, I was like, oh my god, I can't wait to talk to him to talk a little bit about it. I'm so excited to talk about um, your journey. But through the through the interview, I'm gonna ask some questions regarding that. Okay? Yeah. But so welcome to William and the Magic Box. So. I Here, full of random fun questions. Okay, so I'm just gonna yeah. play some music now, just for us to relax, get in the mood before the first <laughs> question. Ready? Go for it. Let's do it. I like your moves. Good. Try to join me this day. Very good. Very good. Ready for the first question, Matt? Go for it. Yeah. Let's do first question. Right, uh, Matt, what's the biggest prize you ever won? The biggest prize I've ever won? Yeah. Um, actually, that, that's really interesting. It, I, I would say it's, it was actually a free hypnotherapy session. And I know that sounds really contrived because we're talking about what I was doing a minute ago, but, but winning that session made me realize that there was this other world and there was there were things that I could delve into myself and I didn't have to be afraid of and I could explore. So winning that um, four years ago was really transformative in my adult life. So yeah, definitely. Um, and then through doing that, I then discovered that I had some contacts online through friends who were already hypnotherapists. I just didn't realize what exactly what that meant and what they did. Um, so then I started to connect with them, talk with them. I had some um, free sessions with them to deal with. I had a bit of a nasty breakup four years ago and it kind of helped me overcome that and to, to basically transform myself uh, and myself what worth. So that's where it's come from. And it, uh, having had it firsthand, it just opened the door and I was like, I need to, I need to give this a shot. I need to do it and that's see how cool. it goes. That's amazing. Very good. Ready for the second one? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, Matt, before the next question, tell me, um, what's the, in your opinion, what's the best part of living in London and what's, what's the most challenged parts in your opinion? Best part of living in London is opportunity. Yes. Sim simply that word. It's opportunity in terms of, of work, in terms of people you can meet from all over the world and how you learn from that. It's about, um, it's about volunteering opportunities that you can do. It, it's about the fact you have access to all this culture and arts and also shopping if you love that kind of thing. Like, there's everything that's very easy to get to. Um, uh, uh, and the, the transport system is just if you live on it the transport system is amazing when you don't live on an amazing bit of transport system it's quite isolating but yeah london is brilliant for that and how it kind of changes over time depending on how the population around it is changing as well so it's just a really exciting place to be it was the most challenged part of living here the negative part of living in london the first few years <laughs> the, really? the, the first few years were very challenging um yeah, when, when you're starting out, when you're, say, doing a graduate job or an entry-level job or you work in hospitality or retail or something, it's it's quite hard to be able to make the most of the city, to actually be in a position that you have the time and also the income that you can actually, you know, make the most of being in London. Um, it's a very challenging city for that. And, uh, yeah, I think people get exploited quite easily if they're not aware of how things work. So. That's, that, that's the challenge, definitely. Very good. Ready for another question? Yeah. Let's do it. Um, what is your favorite place in the entire world and why you consider that? That is a really interesting question and I have an answer immediately and it's, um, and it's Chernobyl. And it's not in a morbid way. It's, it's more that I was fascinated about Chernobyl for years and years. Obviously, when we were extremely young, you and I, I'm assuming, but I'm making 
I'm making assumptions about your age. I'm assuming you're similar age to me. Yes. The, the disaster in Chernobyl happens. Um, and it was on the news and then it was on the news for years afterwards. So even I even have a memory of when I was a kid of of something happening there, not knowing exactly what it was, but something happening. And it's only as an adult that I've been able to explore that on the Internet and see what happened. And then I visited in um, 2017 and 2019. And there's so much to learn there. It, it's it's amazing. Like the, it was the first like women's uprising in the Soviet Union happens in Pripyat, which is the new town that was built in Chernobyl. And you learn about that when you're there because you wouldn't commonly look for that online and it's not kind of advertised. So it's the, they revolted because they wanted jobs. And then mm -hmm. the Soviet Union then built them a high tech factory where they didn't actually know what they were making. Um, and every room was partitioned off, making an individual piece of an object. And then what we discovered was they were making the timepieces for nuclear weapons. Wow. So in an area that had a nuclear disaster. Um, so th there's so much to learn there. It's fascinating and there's so much to see. And one of my other passions is photography. Mm -hmm. And obviously somewhere like that, you've got all these abandoned buildings from the 1970s and 80s, because that's when most of them were built, because it was kind of a new city. Um, and you can explore most of that and see, like you can see where people have drawn on the walls, like kids have drawn things with chalks or crayons and stuff. It's still, some of it is still there. Wow. It's just, it's harrowing, but it's also, it's so interesting that it's just like, it, it, it is my favorite place in the world. And obviously there's, there was a lot of death and everything associated with that. And that's all been underreported, but it's just so much to learn. It, it's just great. Very good, very good. Let's get another question for you. Let's do it. Okay. Right, but next question is, um, what is a significant event that has changed you? Uh, there's a few. Um, one, I think one I'll mention is meeting my biological father. Wow. And that, and that happened in 2012, I think. So a bit less than 10 years ago. Uh, and then meeting my three half sisters. That's amazing. Who, uh, yeah, who were at the time, they were, they must have been 10, 12 and 13. So like really girly girls, really young, really excited, like so happy, like, oh my God, we're so happy we have a brother, like kind of thing. And it was amazing. Like it was, it was such a empowering experience. And because it was something I had put off for so long, because with the UK adoption system, I had to, I had to make the move. Um, it, it kind of just it'd been nagging me it'd been there it'd been almost eating away at me and i just needed to resolve it so when i met him and met my half sisters and his new wife uh, it was just kind of like a really important part of continuing to develop as an adult it really kind of cleared some stuff up for me it was really important I'm so happy that this uh, this question came up to you because it's uh, yes you see the magic box is always always I believe this 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 the thing the, the most beautiful thing about this project is the questions are here you know and I don't select questions I just pick up any question and uh, I always believe that the right questions always come to the right guests you know and I'm so glad that it's called oh, very beautiful that's very beautiful Matt they will just share thanks for sharing that and um, are you okay to talk about it. Yeah, 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 I'm very so open how, about it. Yeah. So, so how did you? So you being adopted? How did you? How how it happened? Like. So I was um, when my biological parents realised that my biological mother was pregnant. They were seven. They were both seventeen, right. and at college, um, and they made an active decision that they were too young to have kids. So they went to the local government which is what you do and then they basically then selected couples who wanted to adopt children and my mum and dad who adopted me um, who are some of the most amazing people or the most amazing people that I have in my life um, they had already adopted my sister and they wanted to have a, a, another daughter or a son um, and they were interviewed by my biological parents and they chose my mum and dad to take me so I was in a very fortunate, fortunate kind of position because that doesn't normally happen. Normally it's a bit more chaotic than that. Normally a child is, sure. is left or taken off of someone or something like that. And then they have to find someone and there's normally a gap. But 
Um, I was in care for two weeks because that was a statutory thing that had to happen. And then I was given to my, who I would call my mum and dad, Wendy and Richard. And it's, uh, yeah, it, it's just fantastic. It's been really good. And they've given me so many opportunities in life that I don't think I will have had if I hadn't been in that position that it, it's worked out amazingly. Absolutely. Uh, just because you shared something so personal about yourself, I'm going to share something personal about myself as well. Uh, I, Please my do. mom, when she, my mom, uh, she, um, she had a baby. So the same circumstances as your biological mom. She, she was around the same age as well, uh, young. I think 17, 16, I believe, because my, my parents are very young. I'm third, I'm 38, and my mom is 55. So she's very young, and my my dad as well. Wow. Yeah, they're very young. Yeah, yeah. Very young. Anyway, so mine are the same. Yeah. So my mom had uh, my mom had this baby uh, before she before she met my 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 dad. So she had this baby, and um, it's quite sad actually because her my grandmother at the time she forced her to give away because you know during this time like she was a very small town didn't have too much information you know when during the other time like to have a child like a teenager to have a child they just give away and uh, she was forced to give away and. Um, So I, I, it's funny because I always grew up knowing about that. I remember mom talk about my. It was it was hidden, but for some reason we knew it. Me and my sister, mm. and um, so my mom like cuts cut, cutting a lot of the story. My mom she met she met her um, her daughter. Let's say I think two three years ago, and uh, it was through me because she contacted me. She contacted me because wow. she, yeah, she contacted me, and I knew who she was, but I never have been I never had um, contact. And uh, she contacted me. She said, "Look, I know I I'm just contact you. I I don't know if you know who I am uh, on Facebook." And I said, "No." I said, "Of course I do," because we had a lot of friends in Como. It was like a small town. And I said, okay. "Of course, I, I don't have Of course, I, I I know who you are, but I never kind of approach you because you know I I don't know how I I wouldn't ne I, I never had this kind of thought about doing it." And she contacted me, and she was like, "Look, I, I'm just contact you because." Uh, um, I, would, uh, I know uh, I, I know a lot of people who knows you, and I can see that you are very approachable, you are very open-minded. I would like to talk to you a little bit about. It. Oh my God, yes, of course. And we talked yeah. like a lot, a lot. And she said that she wanted to meet my mom. That uh, she was, but she was afraid or scared and everything. And I was like, Oh my God, no. So she, she kind of, uh, I was kind of a, a person who was in touch with both, you know. Yeah. And I, and I, I came to my mom, and it was very hard to her to talk about because she was crying, and uh, and I understood because my mom was, uh, my mom always wanted to. to To get in touch with her, but she was scared that she would, um, you know, let me not be able to. She, she would refuse to meet her. Yeah. And, uh, and so they met a few, like two, three years ago. And uh, oh my God, I was goosebumps now talking about. I was, I was still, I still in London. I was living in London. Like I was two years, like less than two years ago. And um, and then I remember when they met. You know what I mean? She was so, so like so was so emotional. And um, It Again, is, now yeah. they, they they are they are living not the same city, but they are in touch all the time. They are talking. Yeah. They are, you know what I mean. And the, her parents, her the, the 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 parents who adopted her at the time, they passed away already. Both of them. And I think that's why she contacted me because I really I felt like I just felt like I need to. I don't have anyone. Like I don't I don't have family. Like uh, you know. And she knew my mom. And she and now they are they are very let's say. I don't say good friends, but you know they are, they have this connection. You no, know, they always yes. want to be mother, and, but they are catching yeah. up what they didn't. You know, so it's a beautiful story. It's amazing, I, I just, isn't it? I just yeah. need to to share that with you because I think it's something very, yeah. very, very nice. Good. Another question? <laughs> yeah, let me just open my window slightly. It's getting a bit warm in here. There we go. Cool. Let's do it. Right, so let's get another question for you. Okay, next question is: What does love mean to you? What does love mean to me? Gosh, that—that's a massive, that's a massive thing. Um, <laughs> love is. Gosh, I don't even know how to explain it. Like I'm feeling a physical, like experience from it. It's. Love is like deep down. It's like physical. It's mental. It's emotional. It changes. It flows. It adapts. It's it's it means so many different things. Like I could say to you, I love chocolate, <laughs> and I I eat chocolate every single day. Uh -huh. I could also say to you that I love my mum and dad, 
and it's a it's a different kind of love but it's when i say it i feel like i also feel a physical response like when i eat chocolate i feel something my my best friend ollie the same thing like i have nothing but praise for him and i i love him completely as a person um then you've got love in terms of relationships and everything else which which flows and changes and and it might grow it might reduce it might deplete um it, it it's a massive question <laughs> I, i do believe that love there are different kind of love but all of them they come from a very special place you can love yes. your partner you can love your pet you yeah. can love your you know your your lover you can love your parents so it, all of them they they come from a very good feel it can be painful as well you can it be very can. painful it can yeah. yeah but it's worth taking it i think it's worth love is is worth to you know to have it because it's, it's worth the it, risk and if yeah. you don't experience those those highs and those lows then i feel like you there's something you're going to miss something that maybe you need you need to just experience and just and just try absolutely uh, it's not it's never going to be perfect no never never thank god because if it be perfect it would be boring <laughs> yeah it'd be really boring <laughs> can you imagine <laughs> right, but let's get another question for you Very good. Next question needs. Um, oh, this one's going to be easy for you. Tell us something interesting about yourself. I am I, I like to think I'm a, kind of an aspiring polymath. And this is when everyone Google's polymath and then you read polymath and you're like, "Okay, that 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 will either sound really interesting to you or you think it might sound a bit vague and spread out." But being having that kind of mindset is that you have interest in lots of different things which I do naturally you want to learn about lots of different things and get some detail of that not necessarily to the point where you could say oh I'm a um I'm a physicist and I know lots about specific stuff in science <laughs> whereas I know like small bits about science stuff and about space and how space works and how planets form and everything else like it it's it's about lots having lots of different things in your kind of knowledge and your hobbies and everything else and I felt like that really aligned with me. I heard it in a podcast um about 3 or 4 years ago. I don't know if you've heard of Lewis Howes. No. No. He's a he's a dyslexic sportsman. He is um 36. So he's like one year, two years younger than us. Um and I just found him on podcast and I was like, "Oh, he's dyslexic. He's the same age as us." Uh, and he's a nice guy. Uh and I'm dyslexic as well, so I just started aligning with him and he interviewed someone who said they were who who claimed to be a polymath and they were much more knowledgeable of lots of things than I will perhaps ever be. But I thought this makes sense. This this kind of aligns with me. I like the principle of it. I like learning lots of different things about lots of different areas and stuff. So yeah. I like this word. I like this word. Made my day now. I learned a, it's, a new Yeah, word. it's a nice word, isn't it? <laughs> poly poly flexible as well. So it's like a, a, a and that kind of vibes with me. So I like that. Very good. Good. Matt, are you enjoying this show so far? Yeah, I am. Very much yeah. so. <laughs> good. Good. Let's get another one. Just before the next question. Um Yeah. Tell me something. Um Let's let's say that if I'll come to you now like to for you for an hypnotherapy session. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what would be um what is the preparation? What what you, you usually say to your patients regarding that? What there is a preparation, there is something that you need to do before. Tell me something about it. So how things would start is you would have some kind of ex exploratory call clarity call whatever you would like to to call it and you would basically talk with a potential client for 10 15 minutes and speak about whatever they would like to delve into and as they're talking about what they delve into i will be able to pull up key words key things that that are coming up and it might be that actually the 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 challenge they're speaking about if it is a challenge um actually diverts to something else over that 10 15 minutes and we find the real roots of what's going on for that then when the client would come to me in non covid times or if we did this on on a Skype or similar um we would then do a a whole like kind of 
process of, of explaining how the process works, how the client wants to kind of relax and, and make themselves feel comfortable, if there's anything they need from me to help them do that. And then we would start kind of going down into the state of hypnosis. And I would guide them through that process. And whilst I use the word down, you're actually almost kind of going up because you're going into your subconscious, but you're turning down your conscious mind. So you're less, you're less aware of the present as we are now, as we're talking now and how our temp body temperature feels, we might have a breeze on us or something like that. We become a little bit less aware of those things and we gain access to this whole kind of inner part of ourselves. I see. And then we, we go from there and it's a journey and everyone's journey is, is very different. Mm -hmm. um, d depending on what we've discussed beforehand, Okay. There will be, I'll have an idea of how that journey might look, mm -hmm. but it's very likely that that journey will, will transform as we're in it to whatever the client is seeing and it will end, most likely end up being something else. Um, and this could go on for the, the, the hypnotherapy, the hypnosis stage could be anything between half an hour to two hours. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it just really allows people to access their inner being and to start to kind of put things together, pair things up, challenge things, and also like clear out the clutter. Just get rid of a load of stuff that you don't need and isn't serving you and, and throw it or burn it or whatever's best for you. Just, just get rid of that so we kind of clean the slate and build up a new set of blocks, strengths, confidence, uh, energy, excitement, and then come back out of the hypnosis with all of those building blocks. Um, and the process is just guided. So the, the client is is pretty much doing it themselves just with your words. Mm -hmm. So the, the risk involved, the, the, there is no risk that the client can come out of it whenever they want to. They can have a word that they say, or they can, um, if they need to move their hand or something, they will be able to do it. Um, when they're in a position that they need to. So it's a very safe process um, and it's very, it's very deep. It really explores some stuff. You can also use it for, it doesn't have to be someone's personal challenges. It could just be, um, I want to have an uplifting hypnotherapy session. I'd love to go somewhere that I feel really comfortable, really calm, really energized and then come back out. Ooh. And you, so you can do lots of different things with it. It's really, really um, dynamic very good thanks for sharing that right next question is tell us about your guilt pleasure guilty pleasure well ch chocolate <laughs> <laughs> it's chocolate it's, it's just and it's too much chocolate my, my you PT eat, will you eat every single day I, I, eat, I probably eat more than 100 grams every single day wow that's a lot <laughs> it is. It is a lot. Uh, <laughs> I heard was I, that. I heard was that chocolate brings a lot of happiness. It makes you happy. I heard that. I heard that. Yeah. I, I heard that once somebody said, or I read somewhere. <laughs> it, it does for me. It, it's. It is an addiction for me. <laughs> I know it's an addiction because when I don't have it, I feel like a bit rotten. And I've done it. A, there's been a few times where there's been a few weeks where I haven't had chocolate on purpose. And I do feel a bit rotten for a while and then I suddenly perk up again. But it's just like, it's my choice of vice kind of thing. It's like it's available and it's there and it just tastes so good. Very good. What about yourself? My good pleasure or chocolate? Chocolate. But I love sweets. I is my good pleasure, like big time. But chocolate, to be honest with you, when I was young, I never, I never, if I see it, I eat it, but I never buy it. I never kind of tend to go for the chocolate session, yeah, section. But um, I uh, nowadays I eat more than before. That's for sure. Okay. okay. Yeah. If you came more. to my house, you you would find stash. All right. So I know where to, there's, I know there's where never to, no chocolate. <laughs> I, know, I know where to go now, and I feel like this is the only thing about chocolate. I know where to go. Mark, uh, can I just pop over just for a glass a glass of water? Of course. <laughs> and I go into your chocolate and. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Right, let's get another question for you. Right. Next question.
question is, um, if you were to raise a child, what are the most important things you'd like them to learn? So, so many things. Um, I would like them to connect with their inner selves uh, uh, kind of as early as it is healthy to do so. Um, because I think when lots of children get to teenage, the teenage years, it's a very challenging time. So I think if they had more inward reflection by that point and they've explored themselves, then they can continue to use that through the challenging puberty years and everything else. So that's one thing. Um, financial management. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this because it's really serious. We weren't, in this country, we weren't taught about financial management at all. Um, so, no, so we, I went to university and I had a student loan and I, I blasted it within a couple of weeks and then I had to ask for money off my parents because uh, I had no concept. I was just like, oh, I've got a thousand pounds. I've never had that much before. Wow, yeah. I'm going to go shopping. So I think that's something really important because it's not in the curriculum here. So that, that, that's something that's in, in much, it obviously you approach it in a much more gentle fashion, but it's something that could be instilled in kids like at a much earlier age. Um, I think being like open-minded and explorative and encouraging your child to learn different things is really important as well. I think in, in terms of things like religion, it's, it's really helpful if, if they want to, if they, if they read various texts from various religions and then they have a wide view of um, what all those religions stand for and what the principles are and they can decide where they want to go with that. I think it's all about just giving them the tools so that when they get to kind of 18, 21, they're, they're already running. Sure. Um, and I'm surprised by how many people I've met who are around that age, who are, they're like old souls um, in a really positive way. They, they, it feels like they've already lived a whole life. Very and nice. they're 21 and they're here and they're fresh and they've got all <laughs> this potential and all this scope in the whole world. They can do anything and they're already ready. And I'm just like, that, that's just fantastic to me. That's just brilliant. It's funny you saying that because there is a question in the magic box, uh, which is um, if you could make up a school subject, what that would be? And somebody answered this question saying that I would, I would, uh, I would uh, create a topic where, where children they can learn how to manage their money since early age, as you said, because they would be more read, like when they are uh, an adult, they would, they would be like, they would use in a wiser way or, you know what I mean, they use money yeah. in a different way that we, as you said, you don't sometimes just, when it's a lot of money in front of you, you just feel like sell, yeah. you just like spend it, you don't know afterwards what, you yeah. just feel like, hey, gone. I agree, I agree with you. Another question for you, let's go for another question. Okay. <laughs> right, Matt, just before the next question, I'd like to ask you a question. Um, I, being a coach, like a personal coach, I believe that, um, of course, when you go through the sessions, like helping people out and, you know, how to um, to help them out, I, I'm sure um, you, after the session, some sessions, I'm sure you get a lot of negativity as well. You, you absorb a lot of the, not just negativity, but, you know, you absorb a lot of their emotions and everything. Do you have like do you have like some a technique or something that you do to not take that to your personal life or how to protect yourself? So I, I'm I'm an empath uh, and I'm, I very freely admit that. So if if someone is is really happy and excited, it, it rubs off on me. If someone's really upset and sad, I I will probably end up crying a bit. Um, obviously, in the professional setting of a, of a coaching relationship. I think being an empath can help a lot because you can really relate to the person. You can really relate to their, their matters. And I think to kind of shut those feelings off might not be beneficial. Um, but what I do find is once I've written down or written up all my notes from the session, I can generally put it to, to the side. Um, it, it, it's very, that I have had a few clients in the past where there's been something significant going on and I've really, really felt for them. Um, and that, that can affect you a bit more because you feel like I, I really need to help this person as quick as possible, but you have to, you have to get things to move at their pace and their flow. 
and to then and then to go with that so when they're ready and they have all the tools they're ready to make a change they can make a change so i think shutting off emotions is, is perhaps for me it wouldn't work mm -hmm. um, but i'm sure there are some other coaches who are very um poker face um, yeah. and, and they don't take that in but i think it's it's a strength i see cool another question for you Max, uh, which season uh, of the year you feel more connected with and why? Spring, always spring. I'm I love really? it. Yeah, I, I just love it. Like I feel it now. It, it's like it's like tingling through my body. It's the energy. It's the new life. It's the it's the colors coming out. It's the bit more warmth. Um, it's just it's exciting. It's an exciting time, and it really makes you, especially living in the UK. Um, you'll know it's very seasonal here, um, yeah. but it's not as cold as some countries in winter, but it's cold. Uh, and then in summer, we generally get like mild weather and then we get a few weeks where it's extremely hot. But you really notice that actually in, in January, February, when it was winter, it was really cold and it was a little bit miserable, even if you don't want it to feel that way. It was a bit miserable and suddenly you get to, well, it's, the, it's not even the end of February and it's warming up, but you get to March, April and it's just like, boom. It's just kind of, it just changes. Everything changes. People look happier. It's, yeah, it's great. I love it. I've got three questions left for you. Max, I just realized, my God, I could be here another hour with you. My God, we chat a lot, which is a good, a good sign. <laughs> good, interesting question. Anyway, <laughs> I've got, I have three questions left for you. Let's do it. Okay. Hey, Matt from London. Let's get another question for you. Um, do you have any nicknames? Oh, I had one at school. Um, Tell me. And I, it, it doesn't make any sense at all. Um, and it was uh, the Skazmataz. And I don't know why one of my friends at school called me that, but it had Matt in it. And he was like, he was like, Razmataz, Skazmataz, and then he just cut, and then he just carried on calling me that, like from that point forward. So that that I guess that's kind of a nickname, but I don't have any like adult era nicknames at all. It's it's Matt. Uh, is your name Matthew or Matt? It's Matthew. Matthew. Okay. But I call, I call myself Matt. <laughs> my mum, my dad, my sister always call me Matthew. It's like Matthew. <laughs> At this point, something wrong, yeah? When is it Matthew? Yeah, <laughs> I know I'm in trouble then. <laughs> <laughs> Two questions left. Let's do it. Right, Matthew. Let's go another question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> Don't worry about trouble at all. Um, right, good question. If someone offered you to tell your future, would you accept it or not, and why? That's really tricky. If someone offered to tell me my future, I I would be I'd be chomping at the bit to know. But equally, equally, I would know that the way life has changed so much and i'm sure that's the same for most people like over the years even since i can remember when i was uh like under 10 less than 10 years old i think i'd like it to play out and i think i would like to be able to make it play out in the way that i want it to i, I think if it if i knew something if, if someone told me my future is this um i guess my instant reaction would be to rebel if i didn't like it <laughs> <laughs> Like, no, no. No, do, no, I'm not doing that. I'll do something else instead. <laughs> right, Matt. I have the last yep. question for you now. Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. Yes. So the last question is, what three things are you most grateful for? Life. energy and connection very good like, like you said about the angels it's it's those it's those angels as guardian or guiding angels because they could be they could be there for a longer time or a shorter time it's That's also good. those those soulmates almost who who 
appear in your life at completely random times. Absolutely. Um, and it's the connection you have with those people is amazing. And my last one of those came into my life about, again, about three or four years ago. Um, and she's living in Lisbon, just outside Lisbon in Qashqai. Qashqai as well. Qashqai, so it's actually a bit further outside Lisbon, but to me it's like, it's like when someone says they live in Luton and they, we just think London. Um, but she is amazing. And if she hadn't, if I hadn't had the life experience I had up until that point, I wouldn't have come across her. Our paths would not have crossed. Absolutely. So those people are just incredible. Absolutely. And I'm always grateful for people who crossed my life, people who are in my life at the moment, and people for who is going to cross my life in the future. Yes. So I'm already yes. I'm already excited about those people who are gonna come. I never yeah. I don't know who they are, but I'm already grateful for them to come in the future because for some reason they're gonna bring me joy, they're gonna bring me positive, negative, whatever, but I'm already grateful for those people because I don't know where they are and I'm already excited yeah. about them because they're going to come. It's so from... exciting, isn't it? Because you know it? they're going to come, you just don't know they're where. They're real. It, real. it could be another four years. It might be It might be next month. You come Totally, up, totally. Just... And yes. And wow. I'm... And it's just fireworks. Yeah, it's amazing. I remember when I went to Disney World because I was so full of, I said, my God, I don't know if I'm going to do that. I was so like full of insecurities about this journey. I was alone there. And I, I remember the same thing. I said, oh my God, before I went, I was like, oh my God, imagine those people going across my life when I arrived in the ship in America. And I met people there for life. And, and, and yeah. I, when I was there with them, I was like, I, I was grateful before I even met you. It's like, what are you talking yeah. about, Rita? I said to them, just because I'm so happy that you crossed my life that I was very grateful for that, even before we met. So, and the fact that you were so open about that happening yeah. almost meant it was absolutely going to happen. So if, if you're if you shut that off, then it, it probably won't happen. But if you That's think true. there is yeah. so much potential in the future, there are so many all these people I'm going to meet who are going to be amazing in my life and such important people. Absolutely. It's going to happen. Guaranteed. Absolutely. absolutely. Max, it's not the end yet. Okay, let's play now the quick thinking game. Your okay. face like, oh my God, no yet, no yet. <laughs> Don't worry, it's very easy. I'm going to give away some words and you just tell me one word that comes to your mind, okay? Quick thinking. Let's start with politics. COVID. <laughs> okay, love. Intimacy. Money. Investment. Family. Rock. Sex. Heat. <laughs> Good one. Uh, life. Exciting. Religion. Open. Fear. Character building. Two words. I like that. Say that again. Character building. I like that. Uh, friendship life desire mm. lust <laughs> <laughs> regrets unhelpful success amazing wish dream happiness Everyone. How about if I tell you England? Challenged. And the last one now is yeah, hypnotherapy. One word. Hypnotherapy. Expanding. Like that. Very good. Okay, Matt, let's pretend now I'm going to meet your best friends and I'm going to ask your best friends. Tell me the most beautiful thing you learned from Matt and tell me something that he needs to improve on. What do you think your best friend will tell me? Things I need to improve on, not not doubting myself. Oh, interesting. And recognizing what I've achieved. Things that I'm good at. Yeah, something beautiful about yourself in his opinion. Something beautiful. Um, connection and connecting. Very good. Very the, good. the ability to connect with lots of different people. That you're approachable, you're approachable, you're open-minded. That's, that's people can, even if they don't know you, they feel it. People feel it when people, they're approachable, yeah. open, that's for sure. 
Now let's play now match in the magic box and you can ask me a question. Okay, match. You can ask me a question. Oh. Does it have to could it be any question at all? Any question at all. Okay. Where do you see yourself in five years' time? Good question. I see myself in five years' time working in this project full time. And uh, I see myself as well in five years' time um, with um, a lot of other projects as well connected with this one. I've got other ideas as well, all connected with this um, this genuine project I started out last year. And um, as well, with, like, I hope I'll be in London, actually. I, I hope in five years' time I'll be in London. And it's just like, uh, yeah, just being doing this, what I'm doing right now, in a bigger proportion. And um, we, like learn more and more and more. And just be able to connect with more people. And also giving the opportunity for other people as well to connect with other people who be watching uh, the show. That's the whole... Brilliant. Yeah, I, five years, yeah, that's the whole, um, the whole idea. Good? I love it. I love it. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, did you have a and I'm time? so pleased that you're actually living this now. You're already living it. You've started it. You've put your first foot forward and you've been doing this for a year. And just before you go, if you don't mind to share a positive quote, a positive message, something that inspires you? Oh, uh, yes. Um, I've got a quote on my Facebook and it, 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 it basically simply says, do today what others won't so you have tomorrow what others don't wow so it's about again putting your foot forward taking a risk taking a jump and then tomorrow you'll have more of whatever you're going towards that's amazing and adding to that as well and if you feel scared to give the first step just feel scared and go do it even feeling scared just yeah. do it you know what i mean just feel, if you feel like yeah. oh, do it anyway do it that's the whole absolutely point. <laughs> Matt, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much. I could be here. No, thank you. you. Easily, easily, easily. Okay, brilliant. All the High best five. for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Take care. Bye bye. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, to share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why do you like to be part of the show and I see you there. Bye bye, see you next time.